amnesty calls for prevent strategy to be abolished over human rights abuses. I'm going to read into this exclusive from The Guardian to get a better understanding of it, guys. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Reading Elite here, an exclusive from The Guardian with the headline that Amnesty calls for prevent strategy to be abolished over human rights abuses. The exclusive reveals that the group accuses programs of encouraging fault policing policy and being incompatible with international human rights. Now, um, straight off the bat, I'm just going to uh, point this out. This uh, article is a couple of days old, so I just want to put that point that out there in case you haven't already seen it. But I kind of wanted to have a but this one about, you know, where the position stands on human rights. Where is the line on it? And I think it's it's a simple case of we should not be in any way treaching over that line within on that whatsoever. Now, this is about where how far can the police, how far can can the law go when it comes to when it comes to things i think it's the question we need to be asking ourselves so i haven't read this at all but i do find it quite fascinating to say the least so what i'm going to do instead of normally giving my first thoughts is what i, I normally do i think i'm just going to read some of it and i'll probably stop somewhere maybe in between we'll see so what is this about so amnesty international has called for the abolition the abolition of the government's counter-extremism strategy prevent. Accusing it of severe human rights abuses and of encouraging culture of, in, of fault policing. A report by the group says prevent legal duty of public sector workers such as schools and health to report their suspicions are fundamentally incompatible with the international human rights obligations. And as he said, the legal duty led to breaches of the right to the freedom of expression, freedom of thought, consciousness and religion, freedom of peaceful assembly and the right to equality and non-discrimination. The report was a blistering attack on the PREVENT program, which security officials sees as one of the most important ways to stem the flow of recruits to Islamic and extremely, increasingly extreme right-wing terrorism. The Guardian has learned that the official estimates, which have never been made public, are are since uh, 3,800 people have been turned away from the path to terrorism. Okay, so this is about the cusp of free speech and about if pointing out warning signs about people who may go down the, the path of right-wing extreme terrorism. That's what this is about. And it seems like the group uh, Prevent are looking like they're going to be pushing, or maybe perhaps pushing doing too much observatory shall we say on ordinary people and i do think there is a there is a case to be made on that now yes it's great that many people have been turned away from the path of terrorism and i'm, and I'm happy on that but when when is it too much control when is it too much observing when is it too much on top of people when when is the line is i think where it is and they say that they're, they're fundamentally incompatible with the international human rights obligation it's difficult to draw a line i just feel of where it is right to do where it's right and where it's not right and um yeah uh, accusing it of severe human rights abuses and encouraging a culture of fault policing yeah we can't have too much policing we, we can't have too much too much of it there needs to strike a balance here and i think what um Amnesty International are basically saying is that they're not going, they're not striking that balance, and they're being too one-sided here, and that they're 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 continuing to probably you're pushing you're you're going a bit too far. I think is what they're they're basically saying is my understanding of it. But even some security officials have feared prevents mission has become confused, sometimes under political pressure, and move towards trying to capture those with unpopular extremist views who are not committing a crime. Okay. Yeah, the political pressure. I don't I don't like the political pressure involved in it. Amnesty highlights official guidance that recommends people use their gut feeling before reporting concerns. Yeah, I think gut feeling is, is probably the best thing. Um, it's not always the right thing. But I can understand that as being as well. The prevent strategy rests on the idea that there is a casual relationship between undefined extremist views and ideas which may be espoused by lawful nonviolent groups and terrorism, the report said. But the alleged link 
22 is not clearly articulated, nor that is clear where legality ends and potential criminality begins. People need to know that line, don't they? It added the brief of discretion permitted in prevent decision making has resulted in significant risk of discrimination. Islamic folk stereotypes, but association Muslims with extremism or terrorism have played a major role in referrals to prevent. A disproportionate number of neurodiverse people and children also feature in prevent referrals. The report this calls this a, is the fault police said. Amnesty International spoke to people who were referred to by prevent largely because they expressed non-violent political beliefs, including one person whose employer referred them to prevent for their left-wing social media posts. People were often told why they had been referred to prevent or what the outcome of their referral uh, was. Such secrecy and a lack of clarity is difficult to justify what purports to be a pre-voluntary pre-crime pre program. Mm. Yeah, pre-crime. The, the, the idea is obviously they're trying to be ahead of the curve of people wanting to commit acts of terrorism or, or that. And they're trying to read into it. But I also feel it's too much spine as well. I'm really torn on this, guys. I really, really am. Amnesty said that 87% of prevent referrals do not meet the criteria for intervention, suggesting too many people are caught up in the program, with one in three referrals being for children under 15. In 2021-2022, more people were referred for alleged extreme right-wing views, 1,309 people. Then Islamic views, 1,027 people, with the ideology in most other cases being unclear. Cases cited by Andersi included Ifran, a teacher in the north of England who was referred to prevent after complaining about Isla Islamic phobic harassment at school, including jibes about his beard and being called a terrorist. Another was of that of 11-year-old Zayn, who was referred to by his school in Northern England. During a fire drill, he said he hoped the school would burn down. Later, a student claimed that Zayn said he wanted to blow up the school, with the teachers inside it. Zayn had told the school the comment was a joke because he, stressed, he was stressed with the homework and school rules. Yeah, but saying something like that, that's a very extreme rhetoric for a child to say. And where did they get that from? Was that from the school? Or was that from the parents? And then that, that's where the question's about the parents and what they're teaching their child and, what, and where they're getting that kind of ideas and thoughts from. That's the question that should be asked here. A child saying that they want to blow up the school with teachers inside it should be alarm bells, not just for that child. But why? Why? how is the child able to develop that mindset in the first place? You know, saying they're just saying it is one thing, but they shouldn't be just saying it. You know, the joke, joke, the joking about it, uh, it comes across as, oh, I'm just joking about it, I don't actually mean it. Well, why, why would you say something like that? His mother, Jasmine, told the reporters, she, the teacher, looked at my son, saw a brown Muslim boy. She made the prevent referral not based on evidence, but based on her own bias. The referral had a detrimental impact on the family. My, my, my point is, is that why, why was the child saying that? Why would the child say that regardless? Like, you, the parents obviously must have done something to put, the, put that kind of mindset in the child's head for the child to say that, regardless of how that child was feeling. So I would say questions need to be asked about the parents just as much, not just about the child there. It also cites the case of Mike, uh, Michael Fulton, reported for writing, God is great in Arab, sharing pictures of guns, soldiers and anti-abortion materials with another student and talking to a rabbi about converting to Judaism, which led to a police visit to his home. Yeah, see, where are they getting this in? See again, where 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 is where is this person getting this information from? Obviously, he's getting them from the internet. Like, what's been done to prevent this? One senior teacher admitted to researchers that if in doubt, they refer a child to prevent, avoid getting in trouble. Sacha Demishka, Andersi International UK chief executive, says the draconian approach inevitably sweeps up innocent people and can destroy their lives and futures. Home Office said Prevent was crucial to stem the flow of potential terrorism recruits and that the program was being copied by other countries. Prevent is such a vital safety net against the threat posed by terrorism. Encouraging disengagement with the program undermines its ability to, risk, to reach at-risk individuals and is irresponsible and dangerous. 
spokesperson added that the government fears that scrapping prevent would severely weaken its fight against terrorism and while the prevent duty should not be used to suppress freedom of speech harassment and incite violence or terrorism was wrong I am actually more inclined to think that prevent is needed. Um, some of these examples here, like why, why, like some of these examples here, these are some great examples of how prevent have actually stepped in. And while people were claiming that this is harassment, my initial reaction is, is that why did a child say that? What gave them the incentive to say that? Why is a child drawing? Um, anti-abortion material and pictures of guns and soldiers you know uh, talking about a rabbi about converting to Jewism why why are they talking this way what is encouraging them to do that that way now is it is it a case of the internet and what they're learning off the internet is it a case of the parents you see and I, and I, don't, I, and I understand that people don't want intrusivism intrusive on the, on their lives but you could be, but you're, but it does come across the way this, this has been come across here in the article is of being radicalized at a young age, and that does raise alarm bells. And on that basis, I think prevent does need to be, does need to be there. Um, is it too intrusive? Uh, I'm a bit torn on the on how how intrusive it should and shouldn't be. But on based on these stories, that's definitely raising calls for concern. Like if, if I wasn't aware, if, if my child was doing things like these, I would be greatly concerned, that is for sure. And I think that on these base, on these, some of these cases, I, I say they did the right thing by telling Prevent because they were concerned about the well-being of, the, of that child. Um, you may disagree with me on that, but my, my concern is about what the path and the mindset that they are going, especially at a young age where it could lead them. And they need to know that and they need to know what that what's knowing what is right and what is wrong and knowing where the line is because when they're young they don't really know what that line is and I, and I do think that when this kind of thing is happening to children it's not just the questions of what they're looking at and what they're seeing on the internet questions need to be asked about the parents as well um, so what do I think of prevent Based on based based on some of these uh, based on some of these stories, and yes, I know I am reading it just from the uh, Guardian here. I do think it's it's needed. Um, I think scrapping it, I, I'm in agreement with the government that scrapping it is wrong, and I think we need to make sure and ensure that that uh, that we prevent children and future generations from going down extremism and views, and understanding and, and knowing the dangers of it because we do want to prevent it and there are going to be more and more cases of these things social media is playing an influential part in this and we need to be able to tackle it so um yeah that's my that's my my thoughts guys but what do you guys make of it what do you guys make of prevent what do you think do you think Amnesty international were right to call them out um they said other countries are using prevent as well or similar countries as well let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of all of this i'm curious to hear your thoughts on it like share and subscribe as always thank you very much for watching and i hope to catch you all very very soon